Welcome everybody to another edition of MLW 2004 in the Ruthless Aggression mod as we're continuing the road after Crazy Crazy Nights. So it's the first taping in April, so let's get rolling. And we'll put things with an Extreme Horseman backstage, you know, post the big show where they basically crow about still being the champions. That, you know, MLW officials tried to screw them over, but we, they showed why we're, they're the dominant force in Major League Wrestling today. And, you know, Karina gets a quick promo saying... You know, Sabu may have beat the old man, but does it matter? Because he's the best wrestler in the world today, and there's nothing that a freak can do about it. And this gets a 61. Solid stuff. Then we have our opening match, which is in a decent match. The Amazing Red defeated Michael Modest in 751 by pinfall, the Red Star Press. So this gets a 46. Amazing Red gets a 43. Modest gets a 47. Got the crowd buzzing. And yeah, there we go. Just a back and forth match. Amazing Red gets the big win over Modest. And then the Amazing Red celebrates, gets a 29, because it went a minute, and Amazing Red is not the most charismatic guy in the universe. Uh, then we have a Sabu Funk recap, which gets a 43. I mean, just fairly straightforward, just recap of the match itself. And then about had terrible wrestling and odds and crowd heat, PJ Freeman defeated Puma in 613 by submission. So Puma gets a 30, Freeman gets a 17. Back and forth match, Puma tries to win over with the flying, but Freeman locks him in a submission, and that's all she wrote. After that, Friedman Celebrating gets a 23. And then we have our Lynn Danielson recap, focusing on the fact that, like, you know, they actually tied during the actual match itself, but Lynn got the win in overtime, and that recap gets a 40. And then Homicide does an in-ring, calling out Chris Hero, and that gets a 29. Nothing too, you know, fancy, just, you know, you... You know, Punk, you got lucky when we were in that three-way. Now, face me one-on-one. -on -one. And then, in a bout that didn't have much heat and terrible wrestling, Homicide defeated Chris Hero in 855, with 187. Or 187, rather, and that gets a 31. Homicide gets a 30. Hero gets a 24. Solid stuff. And then Homicide, continuing the beatdown, gets a 34. After that, we have our main event of the evening, which is a, in a bout that had good heat and decent wrestling. Jerry Lynn defeated Simon Diamond in 12-12 by pinfall, the Cradle Pile Driver. This gets a 55, which I'm pretty sure is one of our better matches. Uh, Lynn gets a 44, Diamond gets a 55. And then after the match, Lynn celebrates and points at Carino, uh, making the belt motions. And that gets a 52. And overall for the night, we get a 51. So a really good show. And I'll be back in a second with the second show of the taping. All right, time for the second show of the taping for MLW Underground. So let's get rolling. Um, so we have a you know post match promo, a post match promo to start the show from the previous week, as Lynn basically challenges Sabu for the for an actual number one contenders match, supposed to be be giving the title shot, and this gets a fifty three, solid stuff. And then in our opening match, Nigel McGuinness and Roderick Strong defeated Chase Rance and Matt Martell in six oh three. When McGinnis pinned Matt Martell with the Tower of London, this gets a 37. Strong gets a 44. McGinnis gets a 36. Martell gets a 25. And so does Rance. And then Team Celebrating gets a 32. Um, then we have a low-key promo where he officially challenges Dutt for the Junior Heavyweight Crown. And that gets a 44. Loki does Loki stuff. Talks very deeply. All that fun stuff. And then in an abysmal match, PJ Friedman defeated Pete Wilson, 5-5-4 on the rise submission. Again, Wilson goes for the flying stuff, and Friedman taps him out. Uh, Friedman gets a 20, Pete Wilson gets an 8, and Friedman celebrating gets an 18. Uh, Raven promo, where he basically talks about losing to Crino and says, a change is needed for my redemption, and I'm going to make that change no matter what. And that's a 47, solid stuff. And then in a terrible match, the Havana Pitbulls, words, words are hard, in a terrible match, the Havana Pitbulls defeated TJ Wilson and Teddy Hart in 708. When Ray's pinned Teddy Hart with the Cuban Missile Crisis, this gets a 34. Ray's gets a 38, Romero gets a 27, TJ gets a 24, and Teddy Hart gets a 19. And then Havana Pitbull celebrating gets a 20. Uh, Norm Siley cuts a quick promo, which gets a 26, about teaming up with Lynn with Jerry Linton and Six Man says he's going to prove he, that he belongs here in Major League Wrestling and that he's more than a joke. 
And then in a bout that had good heat and decent wrestling, Jerry Lynn, Norman Smiley, and Sanjay Dutt defeated the Extreme Horsemen of Carino, Diamond, and D'Lo Brown in 14-13 when Lynn pinned D'Lo Brown with the Cradle Pile Driver. Uh, Dutt got a 49, Smiley got a 36, Lynn got a 51, D'Lo got a 58, Diamond got a 56, and Carino got a 58. And then we have a post-match brawl. And in the end, Sabu appears, and but you know, after clearing out the heels, he has a stare down with Jerry Lynn, and he simply nods and walks away. And that gives us a 48. And overall, that gets a 47. Solid stuff. And let's see if there's any sort of news we got. Well, that's good from Saw. He's back at 100%. Um, not much, just the same stuff. Raven and Ekmo still want time to heal, but that's the same as it was before. Um, let's see here. Let's take a quick look at our storylines. Yeah, as soon as I remember where that is, there we go. Storylines. Okay, so. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, so we'll be back in a second with the next taping. Because remember, there's about a two month gap between the big shows. So we're just sort of, you know, going to do at least the taping for a couple shows here. I'm probably going to go four, might go five or six, depending on how I'm feeling. Uh, but obviously, if you look at the link to the video, you'll figure that out yourself. And yeah, still no, um, still no money as far as merch goes, really. But what can you do? And we'll be back in a second with the next edition of MLW Underground. All right, time for the third show of the month for MLW Underground, so let's get rolling. As basically we start out with the Extreme Horseman on Happy that Lynn got a lucky, lucky victory in their words over D'Lo. And, you know, basically they say that's not going to happen again. And, you know, Sabu and Jerry Lee can have their little slap fight later on. But tonight, it's going to be a reminder of why the Extreme Horsemen are the dominant group in Major League Wrestling when Diamond D'Lo carve apart Oki and Dutt in the main event. And this gets a 50. And in, our, in a poor match, Nigel McGuinness defeated the Amazing Red in H57 by submission with the Tower of London. This gets a 41. Nigel gets a 32. Amazing Red gets a 46. Nigel was way off his game, but this match got the crowd buzzing, so that's a positive. And after a tense moment, we've got a handshake, and that gets a 34. And after that, Terry Funk is at his ranch. You know, basically cuts the promise says he's not dead yet, and he'll return to MLW in due time. Uh, this gets a 40. And then Chris here does a quick backstage promo where basically he talks about how, you know, Homicide did beat him last time, but he's, you know, he's not done fighting yet. Uh, this gets a 31. Yeah, not the best, but what can you do? And then in a bout that had terrible wrestling and now existing crowd heat, PJ Friedman defeated Bobby Quince in 604 by submission. This gets a 24. Quince gets a 23. Friedman gets a 21. And then Friedman Celebrating gets a 24. And then in a decent match, Homicide defeated Van, Van Piro in a no DQ match in 923 by pinfall the cop killer, following interference from Chris Hero. So basically, Hero, like in a no DQ match, comes in, whacks Van Piro from behind with a steel chair. Homicide hits the cop killer, and there you go. Homicide gets a 30, Van Piro gets a 52. Uh, Homicide is confused for a second, but then Hero goes after him with the chair as well. And the brawl is on. This gets a 29. And then in our main event, in a good match, Simon Diamond, D'Lo Brown defeated Sanjay Dutt and Loki in 14-11. When D'Lo Brown pinned Sanjay Dutt with Sky High. So this is, you know, partners not getting along as you expect. And the veterans take advantage. D'Lo gets the big pinfall over the junior, junior global crown holder. And yeah, big, good match. Uh, D'Lo gets a 57, Simon gets a 58, Loki gets a 47, and 79, Sanjay gets a 52. And the show ends with the Extreme Horsemen celebrating as the good heels that they are. And it's a 58 overall, and the show itself gets a 51. So again, solid stuff. So back in a second with the final show of April. Now it's time for the last MLW Underground for the month, so let's get rolling. As we start to start out with an actual match this time, as in about that had decent wrestling but didn't have much heat, Nigel McGuinness and Roderick Strong drew, drew with the SAT in 8-11 following a double disqualification because basically the Havana Pit Bulls ran in and attacked both teams. And so Strong gets a 47, Nigel gets a 43, Joel gets a 38, Jose gets a 41, 
and the oh, like I said, overall the match it gets a 48, and the continued attack on both teams gets a 35. After that, we had Loki and Dutt arguing backstage over the match last week, and that gets a 40. And I'll also officially pre-book for next big show. Loki versus Sanjay Dutt with the World Junior Heavyweight title on the line. And then we have a quick Jerry Lynn promo talking about how like you know he's all the respect in the world for Sabu and what he's done over the years. But it's his time now and he's going to defeat, defeat Sabu and he's going to take the MLW World Heavyweight title off the off the waist of that jackass Steve Farino, and that gets a 44. And we have an extremely short match. ECMO defeats M Dog 20 and 255 if involved, Samoa and Drop, and it gets a 31. And then ECMO makes an open challenge uh, to anybody who wants to fight him, and that gets a 52. And then we have a Sabu Hype package, which gets a 42. Just, you know, any video you would have seen from during the ECW days about Sabu, only as MLW stuff instead. And then we have a smiley and hero promo where basically, you know, uh, hero says that, you know, that smiley wants a shot to do something more in MLW and he agrees with them. So smiley's going to face homicide tonight and they're going to take the fight to both fame hero and homicide. And that gets a 31. And then in the match, and about that decent reaction from the crowd, but subpar wrestling, homicide defeats Norman smiley in 603 by Pentel the cop killer. And that gets a 36. And overall homicide today was not quite dominant, but basically controlled the match and got the easy pinfall victory. And Homicide gets a 32, Smiley gets a 34. And afterwards, a Homicide beatdown, but Hero saved gets a 30. Then we go to our main event, where in a good match, Sabu defeated Jerry Lynn in 15-1 by pinfall the Ruby and Silk Skull Crusher. That gets a 59. And then Sabu celebrating gets a 40 overall. So overall, we get a 51. So let's just see how stuff is looking. Any interesting emails and such? Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Edge opening a great new move. Let's see. Terry Funk thinks Nigel Begin is going to be a star. Well, thanks for letting me know the future, Nigel. Ter old Terry. I just want to see here. Uh, okay. So, yeah, that was our best match ever. So, that's interesting that Sabu Smiley was our second best match ever. That's sort of random. Uh, Prino versus Raven at the big show also was good. And, yeah, okay. Now shows wise, okay, so okay, so our last two tapings were our best two shows. So stuff is getting better. Uh, size wise, we're slowly, yeah, we're slowly getting a little more popular. Um, I always forget where. Okay, so we have the American Red, and then we have Sunshine Network for the rest of the great. Okay, that's what I thought. I uh, just wanted to cut into the simulating here to do a quick thing where it looks like. Brock Lesnar defeats Nakamura for the IGBW title, which is interesting because that's really happened in 2004. And it didn't actually go the best for New Japan, so let's see if it does any better. Also, El Hijo Del Santo is the Junior Heavyweight Champion, and Bill Goldberg defeated Fujinami. Fun stuff. So, another wacky thing's happening in the save. Antonio Inoki died. So, yeah. That's sure a thing. That means... And New Japan needs a new owner and a new booker. So that's fun, I guess. I don't know how long Brock's keeping that IWGP title now. All right, time for another edition of MLW Underground as we tape the last two shows before our next big event. Uh, hybrid Hell, right? Or is it Revolutions? It's Revolutions or Hybrid Hell. I'll double check after the show. I know, that's dumb, but... Anyway, all right, I, I can just check, check my pre book Yeah, it's 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 revolutions. Duh. Anyway, now onto the actual match. So basically, you know, start off with the promo from the Extreme Horsemen, where they make fun of Sabu, saying, you know, Sabu is a freak. He's a man out of the past. The future is men like Carino, Diamond, and Dilo, actual wrestlers with actual skill, not people willing to kill themselves 
in front of a bunch of morons. And that could say 56. Then in our opening match, in a belt that had decent wrestling but didn't have much heat, Heat, Nigel McGuinness, and Roderick Strong defeated the SAT and Havana Pitbulls in 11-13 when Strong pinned Maximo. So he had Strong getting a 49, McGuinness getting a 45, Joel getting a 39, Jose getting a 44, Rocky getting a 29, and Ricky Reyes getting a 41. So a really good match. And the babyface is celebrating afterward. It's a 37. And that, I mean, well, it'll be officially announced, but yeah, we'll officially announce it'll be a rematch for the tag team titles as uh, Simon Diamond and Dilo will defend against Nigel and Roderick and for the Gold Bowl tag team crown so we'll pre book back and there we go and then we have a Terry Funk video um, just a you know highlights of his career here in MLW and he's saying he'll appear at Revolutions with a with an announcement and that'll be 35. And then in a Beth had terrible wrestling in Oasis and Crowd Heat, Stampede Poldock defeated Clance and Puma in 558 when Harry Smith pinned Bobby Clance with a springboard heart attack. This gets a 29. Uh, TJ gets a, gets a 25. Harry Smith gets a 23. Puma gets a 29. And Bobby Clance gets a 24. And then after, after the match, Harry Smith surprisingly takes the mic and actually challenges PJ Friedman, of all people, to a match. And that gets a 16 because Smith isn't that over, and it's Harry Smith in 2004. And then in an extremely short match, Ekman defeated Matt Martell in 239 by Pintol Simone Drop. This gets a 35. Ekman gets a 46. Matt Martell gets a 28. And after the match, you know, Ekmo says, Is that the best MLW has? And he issues his open challenge again. And that gets a 51. And then we have Freestyle Sipping where Homicide and Vampiro are backstage. And they almost get a f into a fight, but then determine, you know, it's better that they actually get along tonight to take care of Hero and Smiley. And that gets a 32. And then in the actual match, it's about that decent reaction from the crowd, but subpar wrestling. Vampiro Homicide defeated Chris Hero and Norman Smiley in a hardcore match in 1145, when Vampiro pinned Norman Smiley with a nail in the coffin after there had been bad, bad communication with Chris Hero. Uh, this got a 44, Smiley gets a 38, Hero gets a 26, Homicide gets a 33, and Vampire gets a 50. Uh -huh. And then after the match, Norman goes crazy and turns on Hero. So his crazy wrestling vet got a gimmick of very good. And turn was complete success. Honestly, I just had nothing better to do with Smiley, so why not try this and see what happens. And like I said, this gets a 34. And then, what was supposed to be our main event, which was going to be Sabu versus D'Lo Brown. Sabu is coming out for the match when the Extreme Horsemen can attack, and it's a 3 beat beatdown to end the show. And that gets a 65. And overall, the show itself gets a 49, which makes sense because we had a couple low things like Harris misses promo, and a Clans and Puma versus Bulldogs match, but still, a solid stuff. So, we'll be back in a second with the last show of the taping, and then we'll go from there. All right, now time for the go-home show for Revolutions as we head towards the final show of the taping. So let's get rolling. Uh, so yeah, we start out with a Lin promo where he promises he'll be at Revolutions one way or the other. And that gets a 49. He mentions, you know, Brian Danielson maybe living up in New Japan right now, but he's, he has a focus and has become the, the MW World Champion. And we start with our opening match, and about that decent reaction from the crowd, but terrible wrestling. Loki defeated Teddy Hart in 708 by pinfall to Warrior's Way. Uh, just a match to get over Loki, and it gets a 36. And Loki celebrating afterward gets a 32. And then we have a freestyle statement where the Bulls and SAT are brawling again. And as part of that, we eventually get the announcement that it'll be a match between those two teams. So it'll be, where are they? Yeah. Pit bulls and the SAT once again. And sort of a rubber match since they fought in 2 on 2 before twice and they split those matches. And that gets a 23 overall. And then in a terrible match, PJ Friedman defeated M Dog 20 in 4 3 8 by submission. This gets a 20, PJ gets a 22, M Dog gets a 31. And then PJ accepts the challenge from Harry Smith, which gets an 18. And I go ahead and add that match as well. So, yeah, PJ Friedman 
versus Harry Smith. And then we have ECMO doing his open challenge, but surprisingly of all people, Raven comes out and he says he doesn't want to match tonight, but he wants to match at Revolutions, because in his path to redemption, he must take under his wing the new era and show them the proper way. ECMO says, I don't care what redemption you want, I just want to kick your ass, and he, and he accepts the challenge. So there you go. And then we have in about that decent reaction from the crowd, but subpar wrestling. Norman Smiley drew with Chris Hero in 605 when the match sent into chaos after Homicide and Vampiro became involved. This gets a 32, Smiley gets a 39, Hero gets a 27. And then the Brawl continues being all four men, also gets a 33. And we'll pre book one last match, which is going to be a four way singles match. That's going to be a hardcore match. Hero, or finally Hero and Homicide, and there we go. Oops. Ah, shit. Let's try that again. Also, be it being on the proper day. So there we go. Chris Hero. Pre book there. We have pre book for revolutions. There we go. That's much better. And finally, in our main event, oh, right, and uh, we had the X Horseman in ring and doing a quick in ring promo saying tonight's just a preview of what's going to happen at Revolutions when there will be no revolution. The Hitchin Horseman will rule. Steve Kern will continue to be the biggest, the best old school world champion in history today. And Simon I.D. LeBron will show that they're the greatest tag team in, in tag wrestling. And out come the baby faces, and the match is on. This gets a 50. And the match itself gets a 56, where in a good match, Na Sabu, Nigel McGuinness, and Roderick Strong defeat the Extreme Horseman in 14 third to the 3. When Sabu pinned Carino after using a foreign object, it's Sabu, so yeah. Maybe he brings a barbed wire in the ring, maybe just a table, but anyway, Sabu gets a win over the MLW champion, and that gets a 56. Strong gets a 49, Nigel gets a 42, Sabu gets a 60, Simon gets a 59, D'Lo Brown, Brown gets a 61, and Carino also gets a 61. And then there you face is celebrating in the ring while the heels fume outside gets a 58 to end the show. And overall we get a 50. So let's move on to the next step here. Uh, it takes a second. And you'll see if there's any interesting email and then we'll go from there. And okay, so Hero just still thinks Nigel McGinnis has money. So be back in a second with Revolutions, and then we'll go from there. Be back in just a moment. All right, folks, time for MLW Revolutions 2004, live from the Orpheum in University, Florida. So let's get rolling. So Kevin Kelly starts off things and welcomes us to the Revolution. And yeah, just puts over the big matches, which gets a 47. And then in our in our opening six man scramble in a terrible match, Puma defeated Teddy Hart, The Amazing Red, Jack Evans, M Dog Twenty, and Bobby Plants in 936 when Puma pinned Teddy Hart. And oh yeah, our ref. Okay, and gets a 34 overall. Uh Quinn gets 24, Hart gets 21, Red gets a 46, Evans gets a 40, M Dog 34, Puma gets 26. It's an opening just, you know, high spot freak show and Puma gets the win as he defeats Teddy Hart. And Puma Silvering gets an 18. And then next up we have in a terrible match, PJ Freeman defeats Teddy, Harry Smith in 809 by submission. Back and forth match, Harry Smith showing some surprising skill uh, in the technical game, but again, PJ Smith is able to lock him to a submission and get the victory. Uh, PJ gets a 24, Harry Smith gets a 22. And PJ keeps the hold on until officials come out and break it up, and that gets a 27. After that, we have in a four match, the Havana Pitbulls defeating the SAT in 11:49 when Ricky Reyes pinned Jose Maximo. This gets a 42. Reyes gets a 40. Rocky gets a 29. Jose gets a 40. And in 
Joel gets a 44. And yeah, it's a 42 overall. So getting back and forth match. But man, Pitbull has managed to pick up the victory. And then the Pitbull celebrating gets a 29. After that, in a bout that had decent reaction from the crowd, but so far wrestling, Homicide defeated Norman Smiley, MP Hero, and Chris Hero in a hardcore match in 1137, where machine was Chris Hero, then Norman Smiley, and then MP Hero. Uh, Smiley got a 39, Homicide gets a 34, MP Hero gets a 52, and Hero gets a 26. Overall rating of the match was a 42. This just gets, you know, Homicide over and gets the big win for him. Meanwhile, Norman Smiley and Chris Hero continue to fight. After that, Homicide celebrates, gets a 42. And the next up we have an about that had good heat and decent wrestling. ECMO defeats Raven in 950 by pinfall with Simone Drop, following interference from Mana, so back and forth match, but Mana comes in, you know, knocks Raven down from behind, allows ECMO to hit the big Simone Drop and pick up the huge victory. This gets a 51 overall, ECMO gets a 42. ECMO gets a 42, Raven gets a 56. And then afterwards, the Simone's direct, you know, just a total beatdown on Raven where multiple someone drops and a big splash from the top by mana and there you go that gets a 41 and then after that in a decent match uh simon diamond and d'lo brown defeat nigel mcginnis and roderick strong 1504 when d'lo pins nigel cheating uh probably a title belt whack or some sort of like you know behind the back chair shot or something like that but they make a defense of their global tag team crown titles which gets a 59 like i said Hilo gets a 58, Simon gets a 55, Strong gets a 46, or Strong gets a 49, and Nigel gets a 40, 46 rather. And then afterwards, the heel celebrating gets a 66. And after that, we have a Funk interview where he started running bulls and says, like, there's a time when every man has to move on. But Lynn comes out and says, Terry, if you're really going to leave, then I want one match with you in this ring in MLW. Funk comes on Hawes, but finally agrees, and we have an impromptu match. But Showdown gets a 57. And in a bout that had good heat and decent wrestling, Jerry Lynn defeated Terry Funk in 743 by pinfall to create a file driver. This gets a 49. And you can see Terry's rating, why I'm sort of writing him off, because like he's no longer able to be a top guy. And there's no point to have Terry Funk in the mid card losing random matches. And afterwards, Lynn and Funk hug, and that gets a 49 as well. Then in our semi-main event, in a decent match, Loki defeats Sanjay Dutt in 1347 by pinfall of Warrior's Way. So Loki wins the World Junior Heavyweight title. Basically, I think it was time. Like, you know, he's our top junior heavyweight, so why not give him the belt? And Loki celebrating gets a 46. And then in our main event, in a good match, which gets a 61, Steve Perino defeats Sabu in 745 by pinfall. It says with a handful of tights, but you can imagine chair shot, title belt whack, basically anything to keep Sabu down. And Karina makes defense number three of his World Heavyweight title. Sabu gets a 55, Karina gets a 58. And then afterwards, Karina celebrating, but when somebody slips in the ring, kick, wham, kick, create a pile driver. Lin has made basically his challenge to, to Karina, it looks like, to be the next man to take him on for the World title. And that finishes the show with a 65. And overall, we get a 58. So, a really good show. So, let's see here. Let's say Raven. Um, Jerry Lynn and Steve Carino. And we'll finish the show out. Uh, we'll go over the overness of some folks and then we'll go from there. Oh, yeah, we can totally find sign Steve, Steve Austin. Um, anyway, more seriously, let's look at things. MLW Underground deal expiring, so I'll look at that. Um, we finished number three out of four in the Southeast Regional Battle. JJ Dillon thinks Nigel Minnis is going to be a star. I agree. So first, looking at the creative. So Ravens are number one. Delo's number two. Simon's number three. Brian Daniels is number four. Draylon is number five. Uh, next big things is Nigel and Puma. Hot Prospect is Hero, Nigel, Puma, Homicide, and Smith. Talk to Talk is Raven, D'Lo, Carino, Diamond, and Funk. Who's Hot is Homicide, Sabu, Carino, Ekmo, and Loki. Who's Not is Vampiro, Modest, and Funk, as you expect. Uh, Storylines, everything still has some pretty decent heat. Um, yeah. 
show history. Oops, no, that's not show, show history. I want to look at top 100. So yeah, that was our best event with the 58. And Karina Sebu was our best match. And as long as the tag match being our third best match. So there you go. And again, if we look at the actual merch. Yeah, okay. So we're up to level four, which is good. Roster wise. Let's just start with some major stars. Some major stars is Danielson, who's still in the mid 40s. Dilo Brown, popularity. He's still in the mid 50s. Jerry Lynn, who we sort of built back up to the mid, mid 40s after jobbing him a little. Ravens in the mid 60s, or not mid 60s, but low 50s, early 60s. So about we're up a little bit from where we started. Sebu, I think, took a little bit of a hit. Uh, let's see here. I know, he's about the same. And Simon Diamond is also in the 50s. So star-wise, we've got Ecmo, who's up to a 42 in the southeast. And if we look at his overness, yeah, he got a big bump that last show. Uh, Loki is up to the mid-early 40s in the southeast. So yeah, he's up quite a bit from where we started. Sanjay Dutt is still in the mid-30s, but he's getting there. He's slowly getting over, especially in the Southeast and the Tri-State. Steve Carino. Carino is slowly getting over. Uh, he's up to the 45 in the Southeast, and he's up to 27 everywhere else. So there's that. And Terry Funk. Yeah, Funk is still doing decently. Oops, that's too far. And then, well known, we've got Homicide, who's up to early 30s. So that's good pretty much everywhere. Uh, we got Nigel, who, as you can see, is up to, to the early, either, either the low 30s or low 20s, depending on where we're at. And last but not least, Recognizably wise, we got where it is strong. So yeah, strong in selfies is all the way up to a 38. And everybody else is in the high teens, which is good. And I think there's one more other guy I wanted to look at. Uh, oh yeah, PJ. PJ is still not that over. Neither is Harry Smith, but they're both getting there. You know, slow build. So if we look at our events, our next event is Hybrid Hill at the end, middle of July, so that'll be the next event we'll, you'll see the build up to. Um, but that's all for now. So if you enjoyed this, go, to, go and give it a like. Comment below what you're enjoying or not enjoying. And, you know, subscribe to the channel for lots of TW 2020 content, including this, my local global series in the Cornellverse, um, the TW 2020 series, uh, WCW 2003 series, which is heading towards Bash at the Beach and uh, my Women's Revolution 2010 series, and of course, WCW 1993 with no Eric Breshoff. But that's all for now, so talk to you later, and adios.